To start with a cliché, but for once a true one. I remember that I was on a vacation and I looked out of the window of our car after a fight with my family and felt not fitting in as 15-year-olds do. Suddenly I remembered the data in Star Trek First Contact, how he almost sacrificed everything to the Borg Queen just to be human, normal. I teared up because I was not alone anymore. There was someone like me in a fictional story and he was a hero. Only recently I ever questioned how almost all autistic coded characters are either aliens or robots of some kind. Hi, I'm Telly's greatest fan, a fanatist and writer and general, general fan girl. And I've decided that I wanted to dabble into video essays too. Today's essay topic, robots being autistic coded and the good and the bad of that for the community. On the example of my favorite android, Lieutenant Commander Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. I will pronounce his name as Data, not Data, because in the German version of The Next Generation that I watched, they called him like that. The background footage is uh, of me colorizing some uh, training drawings of him and I will link that in the description. Data was relatable to me because of his social difficulties. He had such trouble to understand why the people around him acted the way they do. And even if he understood, he was often not sure how to react to it himself. And frequently, just like me, he ended up being an outsider because of that. Sometimes the show makes fun of it, but much more often it takes it serious. It's visible that Data struggles and he has to work to, in to interact with others. And while he has no meltdowns or fatigue like humans do, he, he clearly suffers from not getting it right. His senses and the way he processes information also work in different ways to his neurotypical uh, castmates. And yes, I do think he has emotions, but not in the way neurotypicals and even some autistic people like me uh, have. This topic is discussed in depth in uh, the video The Autistic Robot by Okrum. I hope I pronounced this right. I have no idea how to pronounce this, sorry. And I will link that in the description too. The show is contradictory about Data's emotions. It tells, and most uh, of all people, he himself tells that, that he has no emotions, but he also displays them. He is worried for Jordi if Jordi is in danger. He enjoys playing with his cat and makes uh, a lot of d different cat foods for him or her. The cat changes their gender. It's kind of weird, but whatever. He loves uh, Sherlock Holmes and generally is very obsessed with Sherlock Holmes to the point of um, an autistic person like myself would uh, say he has a hyperfixation with him. He also enjoys making art and he is curious about uh, the human nature or the newest space anomaly. One scene that shows Data's emotions specifically uh, well is one uh, at the end of uh, the episode Data's Day, where he stares at um, Brian and Keiko getting married and says that he wants to be married himself and at some point. And it's so clear how, how he's yearning to be loved and to be normal and have a connection with others even despite he says that he has no emotions. Well, does he? It depends on how you define emotions. If you define them as these very specific tints of uh, how you perceive something um, for all kinds of situations, 
situations, then he uh, does not have them. But if you define them as wants and needs and impulses, then he has them. He clearly shows that uh, something is good for him or something is bad for him. And in my interpretation, this already are emotions. The problem with emotions is that they are hard to define and because we are not empaths, we also can't really compare our emotions directly with others. We can only compare them um, through talking. If you have or have no emotions, can you really tell because you don't have a direct com um, you don't have a direct comparison? On the topic of emotions and being autistic specifically, I am not myself like this. I have very intense and easy catalog able, but hard to control emotions like Spock has. Um, but there are many autistic people who struggle with defining or what specifically they are feeling. For example, I had a close friend who told me that for most of his life, the only emotions he could discern were this feels good or this feels bad. And he only learned to see nuances between these two uh, poles as he got older and had more experiences. From what the show shows, um, data pro uh, processing his emotions uh, looks like this too. One thing that um, neurotypicals don't really seem to understand is that you can learn emotions you can learn how to deal with them or even just how to see them. Data sh uh, changes in, over the course of the series and for me it seems as if he uh, learned this too. It almost seems as, as if Data does not notice that he has indeed emotions because he thinks that since he's an android he has to be so different that he is incapable of feeling. This mirrors how society tells that autistic people are cold and selfish and emotionless. And many of us started to believe this at one point in our lives. It's tragic. It could have been a very powerful message to see this explored, but then it likely was too, way too early for this. Another thing that made me uh, relate to him was, and I only realized this very recently, his friendship with Geordi. Because it felt like the um, friendships with other autistic people I had. They obsessed together over engineering, Sherlock Holmes and model ships. They have very di um, direct communication styles that work very well with each other. If they have trouble um, with getting through some difficult social situation, they give each other advice. And they are both nerdy, awkward, very blunt, but ultimately uh, loyal and kind people. Data does not have meltdowns or executive dysfunction and only very rarely has uh, sensory issues, but um, oddly, this does not bother me, um, since he feels much more like a metaphor for being autistic, especially the yearning to be normal, but never really managing, than an, um, than an accurate depiction. I really like how ne uh, neither the show nor the fandom infantilizes Data and his sexuality, despite him being fairly innocent and at times even naive. Contrast Entrapta from Shira, who isn't an android but uh, a human or, well, humanoid. I don't think you can call someone with uh, red eyes and prehensile hair a human, but she's closer to a human than Data is. Uh, anyway, she's curious, but uh, unlike Data, she is not innocent and not naive. And still, she is leashed like a dog by the good guys, and it's um, it's shown as a joke. She is mistreated by everyone but her love interest Hordak. And the show tells that this is hilarious, and parts of the crew mock her, 
and the f um, the largest parts of the fandom declared her to immature to decide for herself and have a sexu sexuality. I only realized just how respectful the Star Trek fandom is about data after I saw how absolutely gross the Shira fandom is about Entrapta. Sure, Geordi or Troy or Picard tell uh, data if he is if he interprets something horrifically wrong, but they are never condescending. They never say or imply you are an android slash autistic, so you can't decide that or you can't do that or you can't be your own person. And then there is this thing with um, him being fully functional. Man, this phrase shaped my horny teenage me sexuality for a long time. But anyway, there is this idea that autistic people can't have sex and never want it and never understand it. And while data is implied to be somewhere on the A spectrum, since he has no real sexual desire, he still is allowed to be a sexual person in his own way. He uh, does research about it, he is happy as uh, Tasha takes him to her bed to, uh, well, <laughs> it's, it feels respectfully. I personally think he's be romantic and dem uh, demisexual, but that's another topic. Brent Spiner originally did not know how popular uh, Data would become with the autistic community and said he was glad about uh, that because he otherwise would have likely messed up. Of course, I would have loved to see Data be canonically uh, autistic, and if any neurotypical person could pull this off, it would be Brent Spiner. But neurotypicals nearly always create insulting portraits when deliberately portraying someone as autistic. I'm thinking of atypical or these typical books of uh, a young autistic boy who loves trains and who finally leaves this room to um, solve crimes. But in contrast, uh, neurotypicals are actually able to um, create uh, realistic and touching portraits, but only if they are um, not deliberate. Of course, there are some um, exceptions to this rule, but most of the time it is like this. Also, it would have likely been, uh, been far too early for this kind of portrayal in TNG, since in the 80s there was even lesser acceptance for autistic people than today. This trope likely stems from the, from the fact that uh, no real AE is known yet, so um, writers have nothing they can base their character on. So they have to base it um, on perceived inhuman qualities. And that's how this neurodiverse coding uh, comes, sim since most neurotypical writers know someone uh, who is uh, neurodiverse, but likely don't acknowledge that they know um, someone. But they are also, uh, but they also see the, uh, see their own the minority's behavior as typically hum human. The same thing happens with uh, our romantic and or asexual robots, since our society puts so much importance on romantic love and sexuality. This means that neurodiverse people and aromantic and or ace people almost only ever see themselves in media as non-humans. I won't talk about um, aro-ace uh, representation though, because that's not my place, since I'm not uh, aro-ace, I'm bisexual. It can be very alienating to neurodiverse people to only ever see themselves as aliens or robots, especially since we are already implied to be somewhat non-human and alien to normal people in most discussions about us. This will sound very strange to the um, neurotypical listeners among you, but I am so used to being described as lesser than human and something that should not exist and needs fixing 
that I still have uh, a hard time thinking about myself as a human sometimes. Only seeing robots and aliens behave like us, ever, but no human characters could also strengthen neurotypicals' belief that we are inherently other and inhuman. I feel conflicted about this trope because I do love robots and I do feel seen in them, but it's also a trope that is clearly a rooted in ableism. There's also another part where I feel seen in Data and why I love not only him so much, but also characters like Hordak from she and the Princesses of Power who is a clone slave uh, created from uh, for an interstellar cult who was cast out because of his disability and tried to win the favor of his master back by conquering the planet he was, he was stranded on. Or Sonny451 from Cloud Atlas, a cloned white rat who slowly realizes how wrong the treatment of her and her sisters is, who longs for, no, for knowledge and learns to be her own person and who ends up in a conspiracy against the capitalist hellscape she lives in. Or Dorian from Almost Human, created to help the police and originally decommissioned because he became too human and who still, even in a crime-ridden cyberpunk city, has his compassion. These characters have to prove again and again that they are person enough that they deserve to exist. For Data, Specifically, this is um, the episode Measure of a Man, where he has to go to court to um, prove that he is, uh, is allowed to be his own person and not property of Starfleet. Of course, I don't have to literally fight for my life like them, but I do have to prove that I am a real person in a far subtler race uh, often enough even in everyday interactions where I have to mask all the time to behave um, normal so that people will treat me, treat me with respect. How could this trope be pulled off in a non-ableist way? If there is an autistic coded robot, have them interact with human autistic people and learn that their autistic qualities do not make them inhuman. At best, this is written by a neurodiverse writer. Just imagine how powerful it would have been if Data had started to accept himself 